Has had a sway bar problem. John French, can you read us? Yes, I can hear. John, we had a report that you got a sway bar problem. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, they told me from the pits I got a sway bar broken. I was, it was getting a bit oversteering. I thought it was just uh, because I was getting the light fuel load, but obviously the front bar's broken. It slowed me up about a second a lap. Can you keep on going with that problem, John? Oh yes, that'll be no bother. What do you have to do to compensate for that? Go a bit slower through the corners. What, the tail wants to come out, does it? Yep, yep. How will it affect you, John, on some of the rougher parts of the track? Because there are some rather nasty bits. Say, where you're approaching now, where you dip down towards McPhillamy Park. Uh, it's not too bad through the fast corners. It's only when you flick it backwards and forwards. Through the S's and that. It goes to show, John, that there's no substitute for experience, eh? I hope you're right. Well, I can think of a few drivers who, if they had a broken sway bar, would come into the pits and maybe lose about uh, four or five minutes. They could kill me. <laughs> I suppose that's why he, he picks an old fella. <laughs> How do you get on with Dick? Oh, good. He knows I'm better than him and, it, and we don't argue about it. We're watching Dick in the pits and he's watching you on the screen, I'm sure. But the words you can offer to Dick, though, are that the car is OK. You're just losing, what, only a second a lap, which really maybe isn't too important. Correct? Well, Dick's going to have to make it up. I'll tell him that. John, when do you propose coming in to change over? I've been asking to come in for half an hour, but they won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, John, we'll let you take a rest. Thanks again for the update about the car and good luck for the continuation of the race. Thank you. Well, that's us at all. Yes. Car still, yeah, the car's still running well. He knows he still has a chance of winning, but he builds the car, prepares the car, lives with the car. And the fans up there who don't know the message still reckon he eats whatever it is for breakfast. <laughs> but... Uh, Obviously, they're not the paid-up members of the Nissan or uh, uh, the Katayama fan club up on the top of the mountain. But Dick Johnson, still a giggle, still a smile and crack. The car's out there, it's still running, it's competitive, and we've still got a long way to go. The Dick, 1982 James Hardy 1000. Dick Johnson has worked so hard to get this car ready. It's an XC Falcon with a new coil spring rear suspension. He reckoned he was working for a couple of months on the basis of seven days a week, 18 hours a day to build the car. And when I saw him at Sandown, he was a very tired man. Looks a bit fresher now, remarkably relaxed. I suppose he reckons that he can't do any more. He works hard, he loves the car, he puts all, his, all of himself into it. And uh, he's still in there with a winning chance. He's got something wrong with the front, but as you heard John French tell you, they can handle that. But they are now going to call John French into the pits. That's the message we get from the pit row, that this car, with John French driving, will be brought into the pits. And John French, who said he, who told you he was wanted to come in for the last half an hour, is about to have his wish granted. Gee, he's turned into a good spell of driving. Always does. You know, he started in the very first Armstrong 500 in 1960, and he won last year in 1981. 21 years apart. Took a long time to win, but a measure of the man, the great Queensland driver, John French. He's got plenty of supporters there too. They give their shirt for John. Go for it, true blue. And that's exactly what Frenchie's doing, down the straight. And if uh, information is correct, it'll be the last time that he'll barrel down there this afternoon because he's about to, on this or the next lap or so, hand the car back to Dick Johnson. And it'll be Johnson that will have to wrestle with that spray bar bolt. He's going for one more lap. Well, he hasn't got the message yet, probably. He'll get the signal there. Although, of course, they can't speak on the radio, although he was talking at the time to us, so... They probably couldn't communicate with him. He has left Finnegan uh, behind, yes. A brave effort by them and the Commodore that was one of the three cars badly damaged on the second lap of the race. But the reason I think that we've had trouble with so many of the cars is not engine problems, but the fact they've been hitting each other or hitting things. A 
I've been watching the uh, Seiko 7 Mazda, and I noticed last time round that uh, Barry Jones was going very slowly along pit straight. Seems to be having some gear selection trouble. He, they did have gearbox problems in practice. And at Sander. Uh, yeah, that's right, where Alan Jones had, in fact, couldn't get gears. Maybe this, it's recurring. I was talking to Bert Jones, uh, Barry's father, who helped prepare the car, and saying the box is a bit suspect. They have been very careful with the start of the race so they don't break up first gear. But it could be that Alan Jones, or Barry Jones rather, driving at the moment, is having gearbox problems, so we may see them in the pits. That's car 27, the Mazda RX-7 of the Jones boys. Meanwhile, we follow John French on what should be his last spell at the wheel. So he'll be coming in, we believe, the next time past the pits to hand over to uh, Dick Johnson. And that Garth Weston showing what might have been. Just passing him, one of the cars of the Tasmanian drivers. Texas Instruments uh, tell us the top 10 overall. There it is on your screen. 05 Commodore Brock and Perkins, followed by the recar Commodore of Bryce and Brown. The second dealer team car, Scott and Harvey. Then uh, John French and Dick Johnson in the uh, Palmer Prudential Falcon. Katayama at the wheel of the Stuyvesant Mazda, car 43 at the moment, holding down fifth spot. Then car 27, Jones and Jones. That remains to be seen whether they stay there or not much longer. Car 31, the BMW of Richards and Mott. The Commodore car 3 of Jensen and Parsons. Then another Commodore with uh, Vincent Brown and O'Brien, car 11 in ninth spot. And car 40, the strong bow Mazda of Dane and McLeod in tenth spot. So for the first time we have three Mazdas in the top ten. And for the first time I think we don't have a Bluebird in the top ten. Car 56, that long pit stop. Uh, has put them out of running. Our special thanks go to Texas Instruments, Australia Limited, for their participation in the 1982 James Hardy 1000. We should pick up the pit stop this time around for John French. Yes, he heads down the pit lane. Going in, there has been well. a suggestion that they may try to uh, replace the sway bar. And just ahead of him is uh, Barry Jones limping in with the uh, number 27 Mazda, holding up uh, John French for a moment or two. So two of the most important runners of the event into the pits at the same time. Jones, who is running in six, and John French running in fourth place in the, the Falcon. The Palmer Prudential Falcon. Dick Johnson will take over. Tire chains, fuel going in. That's just a, a matter of course. Someone will probably look at the sway bar, but I don't think they're too concerned about that. John French just telling him about the car. Telling him Jack getting his belt lined up. Telling him anything about the car or the track that he would need to know. So Dick Johnson back for the final stint in car 17. Well, there's one with a problem. If we'll wait for it to come through. There we go. Let's see who we've got here. One of the recar team cars. 16. He's lined up with Chris Economaki. I'm here with John French. John, I must say that you look as though your stint has been easier on you than it's been on a lot of the younger guys. How was it out there? Oh, it wasn't too bad, actually, Chris. Uh, until this front bar broke, uh, it was pretty good, but then it gets with the light fuel load and hot rear tyres. It's got a bit oversteery. But... That's a part, sir. Let's have a look here. And what have we here? Well, it's the good titanium bar and it looks like she's not quite enough strength in it for the loads of the Falcon. Huh. Well, so the race is beginning to take its toll. How's the car handling? Well, heck, well except for the oversteer, it's pretty good. Uh, now Dick's got new rear tyres and a full load of fuel. He should come back to reasonable sort of times. Uh, obviously, we're not going to police special Commodores, but uh, we'll be out there giving everyone else a bad time. Well, that's good. Okay, Jarvis, thank you very much, and back to the box. Thank you very much, and Alan Jones and Barry Jones' Mazda had been taken to the back of the pits for attention to the gearbox. We'll be returning with the action in a few moments' time.